the funds recording is on uh, combined with what we were already accomplished so to whatever extent that makes sense to you guys um that's well, a little bit contingent on funding though because i can't route more resources into that than i already yeah. have them. so yeah. we're supporting lightly as it's sort of an internal project you guys can have access to the work that we've done and mimic or otherwise leverage it but if we can get funding then we could just go ahead and get it done inside of that broader work right um yeah i was yeah no that's that all sounds awesome and that's uh definitely part of the plan i think magic powered and and the work that you guys are already doing on your three-sided market poc will be extremely invaluable to this effort um i was more curious um in particular with like the cad cad work um, and maybe maybe a, one question is how much work do you think still needs to happen at least for our limited scope focusing on the augmented box? I mean, I know we already have some solidity. Or Trying some to limit the scope. Th this is actually maybe really important from a scoping perspective. Actually, making it augmented bonding curve specific is harder than than doing a, the whole system. So the design pattern is top down. As a, in the, even though the implementation pattern is bottom up. So what we have is a prototype, think of it like a architectural model of the whole building. So we can't necessarily play easily a higher fidelity model of a garage. What we have is a good model of the whole building. And it, but at the sort of, you know, the miniaturization design level, right? Use my, using my architecture example. So what I am actually proposing is that we take the conviction three the one that has conviction, has a bonding curve, and has the dynamic user behavior and all that stuff, we can we can use that one because it's already a like full prototype. And if we're wrapping that, then the sort of work is much smaller because there isn't much more modeling work except for like, you know, maybe playing with the assumptions, trying different experiments, feeling out what makes sense to show off. But like from Ravi's perspective, he's starting with a working model and he gets to play with it and refine it and try different questions and answers. He doesn't have to make a new CAD CAD model because that's not usually where anyone starts. They learn by working with one that we have. And so to make a bonding currently system would actually require us to back out of that something else, right. which isn't to say we'd never so, do it, just that it's actually more sorry. work. Do you mean there's a notebook in particular we should be focusing on? Yeah, that's the one that I demoed at the, remember we did the curation markets meetup? Do you remember um, that demo? What demo Where was I, that? Uh, was, remember we did a 30 minute presentation after the molecule team? And I, were you on that call? <clears throat> um, yes, I definitely was. My brain has too many other things in it to remember that though. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So basically, let's leave it at this. I have a notebook, the same one that I made the video demo from, the same one I gave to Ravi to start to learn from. It is not very, um, it is not very well curated for a reader, but it's fully functional and it can be played with and adjusted. And it, it's the one that generated those images with the the lines and the distribution of holdings and the distribution of opinions and the one where I ran the test that showed what happened when you set the convictions in a, in a way that caused nothing to pass. You Are remember like those three is the notebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but that, that doesn't have a bonding, that doesn't have bonding curve functionality in it. It does. It does. It, it's literally, it's it's a high level representation of the whole cyber physical commons. So it's a it's the it's the POC of the of the sustainable economy, not the POC of one of the earlier subsystems. It, okay, okay, gotcha. I thought it was a link. I don't have a I don't have a market speculation model appended to it, so the bonding curve is pretty much just like People buy in if they, if they have strong opinions, if they, so it, it's not, it could certainly be made more complex, but it's actually already got the bonding curve enforced. So that does have a price trend over time. I even have some plots showing the bonding curve being respected. So you can see the data points over time fall on the invariant. Yeah, no, that's actually got the bonding curve and the conviction voting in. Right. So I guess I, I'm sharing a doc here, which is our user stories for this POC so far. Um, so right. this it's gotta present. It's not presented. Oh uh, no, sorry. It's in, um, or I can share screen as well. 
let me just do that. Um, I dropped it in the chat here if you want to see further, but let me just open up what we've got. So, I mean, we're kind of walking through this as a user. The user comes across these simulations. He discovers the augmented bonding curve. He wants to play with the parameters of the bonding curve. Um, these are the things he can tweak. Um, this is how he, so this is kind of the, the thought anyway from our catch up this morning was that we would limit the scope to like actually playing with the parameters of the augmented bonding curve. You're talking about a completely different simulation test then. You would be talking about building a web app around the hatch sim. So one could do that. We all have the scripts for that too, but that's actually not a, the hatch sim isn't a CAD kid model. The hatch sim is a Python script. But the thing is, you could also wrap that Python in a web service and use it to generate a UI and play with the things that you're talking about. But I would argue that these are actually two completely different things. And the point of the CAD CAD simulation is, is actually closer to why than how, because the, yeah. the whole point of the full system POC is to show this sustainable regenerative economy sort of working. It's not, it's like this is, how we see this. And it's not just a story because it's behind it is actually differential equations. Obviously it's differential equations where you can say, suppose no one ever donates any more money for whatever reason, and then maybe you see it, it slowly die away. Or you can say, you pick parameters like, hey, like how sensitive to people are people to certain things? And we don't want to put a million parameters into it. We can keep it simple, but that's the UX question. The system itself is actually a fully functional, self-contained, dynamical system that can be wrapped in a web app so that you can pick some numbers, click go, and have stuff happen as a result of your choices. But it's the whole system, not the bonding curve. So if you want to see the bonding curve specifically analyzed, you're talking about those parameters. You're really looking closer at the, at the hatch sim code which is also totally written and we use it to make decisions and we can totally appify that. But I would argue that that's like a tiny little piece and it doesn't answer why it answers, it answers what or how. If you really want something visceral from a, you know, a narrative perspective, my expectation was that we want this like, you know, feel of, you know, like the video where you can see the proposals popping up and passing or failing and choices. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So I guess question, I mean, I'm not opposed to altering that scope that we talked about. I just want to make sure that we can get it done within a timeline that we are uh, I, happy I, with. My concern is that you might actually be describing something harder than what I'm describing because yeah, the thing yeah. is, it, is not a CAD-CAD model. That doesn't mean it can't be wrapped in a microservice. It was. It's. It's a simulation and it can be put in a microservice and the microservice can be backed up to the front end, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing that I've been talking about with Max Kudinov is actually not just anything. It's specifically for CAD CAD models. So your actual shortest path is probably to take the conviction three model, yeah. mimic the pattern of the, um, of the three sided. So actually let me show you that three sided prototype because I don't know if people saw it. So if I take my Chrome tab. My understanding, so the, the microservice that you shared uh, some time ago. Yes. What, what, is, what is that in your, your explanation? Is that the model or is that the like, overall? Yeah, let me, let me find something and share. I want to, sorry. I mean, part of the problem with this right now is that like, you're talking to the not the person who's the responsible for most of the labor. So I can put some docs and share, but like, you know, I'm running a pretty large research team and some of these things I'm speaking for other people, but let me pull up, um, God damn it, uh, the right screen and I will show you an architectural diagram. I can find the right screen. There we go. Okay. Um, this is a, diagram of the of what we're doing with magic powered so this seems like kind of a lot but the point is that see this yellow box that has cad cad engine docker container andrew mm -hmm. clark already prototyped a lightweight web app that where it sits with just this yellow box and like some basic buttons to push magic powered is replacing that lightweight sort of html 
like web thing with something that actually is responsible for controlling a variety of data feeds, inputs, et cetera, has a back end and potentially some outputs. Now, this is the kind of thing that ideally we would want to have for the CAD CAD model of the common stack because it's complex enough that we need this sort of you know, UX discussion. So we need to say, okay, you know, what are you actually testing? Do you understand what numbers you're setting before you set them so that the results are interpretable? Because if I stop sharing this and I go back to the web app, the lightweight web app is just like this. Share screen, uh, Chrome tab, box signs, CAD, CAD demo. So this. So like right now, all we have is a thing where you just like, you have a little bit of a description, some diagrams I made in Lucidchart, and if you, you know, run it, you get the results that you would have gotten if you ran this in Jupyter. It's pretty basic, but it's already got, the, got a web service. So in other words, this is hosted on the live internet. I just currently have to log in because it's private. Um, Jeff's seen it before. The UX on this is like shit, but it, it proves that you can have a model just public that's CAD CAD. What, what I was showing you before was the work that we were doing to turn, um, to turn models. So actually, you know, a better way to put it is even, they start as things like, um, if I go to this, so I've got to share my screen again. Sorry, different thing. Um, Chrome tab. Conviction. Sorry, I have a lot of shit open. Um, You're on conviction three. Conviction three is what I'm looking for. I'll drop it in the chat. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm, I was trying to go to it locally, but I can also oh, go yeah, right. to. Uh, because it's it's actually also runs locally, but I can still look at it um, in GitHub. That's fine. Uh, I swear it's right here. Why can't I find it? Oh, there it is. Found it. Mm. Um, okay, so like this, for example. So this is where this, that actually, this this conviction three is the model that I was talking about and it's, you know, it's kind of experimental, right? I can play with it, I can change the numbers, I can change the code, I can do whatever I want. But this is the thing that is the code that is like the, the three-sided market is the same kind of thing, right? It was one of these scripts. And the script got transformed into a dot .py and the dot .py got, got dropped in a web service and the web service was dropped into the back end to give you that like, you know, HTML thing that I just showed you. So it's like all the way from, you know, design to modeling to simulation to, you know, Docker containerized simulation to Docker containerized simulation hosted on the web to Docker containerized simulation hosted on the web with a good enough UX that a non-expert can understand it. And like, we're actually all the way at the level of asking, well, what experiments do we want to run? And like, how do we make that UX not suck? Definitely. Um, cool. So in terms of deliverables for this POC demo and what we want to prioritize. So Griff was thinking that even before uh, fully working, awesome UX, um, proof of concept demo, which I mean is is the goal of this. Um, but he was thinking it would be even useful to have like a walkthrough video of you know a dev using this just in case it's not fully feature complete and there are still some bugs. We could probably have a video produced of someone walking through this earlier than we have that full web app up and, and running. What I was gonna say is that this comes down to who's available and what they're comfortable doing. Because yeah. when I first started talking to Ravi, one of the things I had suggested to him is that he's more than welcome to just greatly improve the documentation and clean up that notebook. And that would be what you would make a video from. Because the problem with that notebook is really just that it was produced by me in my non-existent spare time. So from a communications perspective, it's a cluster top. From a code yeah. perspective, it's fine, it's tested, it works, it runs experiments. But wrapping it in a web service basically gets you, allows you to hide the spaghetti or hide the fact that it wasn't like, you're, you're substituting UX for documentation. The choices are basically, obviously ideally you would do both. You would have the easily accessible, well-documented notebook that someone could walk through and play with and use Python and CAD CAD. But right now, the people who can do that are like my most constrained resources, straight up. Yeah. 
they are the Fair people enough. the bottlenecks in my entire org. So I can't just roll them out. And I'm training Ravi because I think that he's smart and awesome and I want him to learn. And my thought was like, hey, insofar as he wants to work on that, he can like get more comfortable with the model and help clean it up and maybe even make a video about it. That would all be cool. But I think that's a little bit orthogonal to the web app because the web app actually doesn't need it to be cleaned up. The web app just needs the UX not to suck. So they're both valuable, but they're actually not blocking each other. One is making the notebook pretty. The other is making the experience easy. Yeah. And I, I do think that the, you know, if the largest gain we are looking to get out of this is to have something in users' hands that they can understand the common stack, then walking someone, someone through the CAD CAD notebook in a video is not going to. Yeah. Uh, I have found from experience that walking through people through CAD CAD notebooks, if they are not data scientists, they're still just like that. Cool. So like I've been pushing hard in the direction of these web apps because precisely because I'm finding that that's the that's the breakthrough point for a general person. That's when it's like tangible for them where they they understand what it means to say, oh, what if I suppose people actually are more inclined to donate? What if I suppose people are less inclined to donate? And then just see how the simulation changes when I ask that question. Right. So I guess we will need to address, readdress our um, user stories as we've written them up for this POC. I wouldn't scrap those. I just think you're describing a different thing and we have to prioritize it. I would keep that as a, you've defined a thing that I would probably backlog. Because while we can yeah. do that, it's not in our, I don't think it's in our high priority for now. Um, obviously, eventually, exactly what you just described is part of a module for um, for using the bonding curves. No one right. is doubting that the user story is like necessary. I just don't think that it's the same thing that we want to be prioritizing right this second. Right. And uh, okay, so scope will be easier to stick to conviction three notebook rather than looking to get into the augmented bonding curve. We can backlog that and move that to uh, future deliverable. These are different uh, deliverables. My point is that the conviction three notebook is the representation of essentially of our, of our design, not of our first field test. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so single page is okay. So, okay. Ravi will focus. Can you make sure that you can send me the user stories that you guys did do? Because I still think that we want to log that as the, the stories for the bonding curve module. For helping people learn how to design those bonding curves, we actually need to do all the stuff that you just said. I just, I want to, I want to backlog it, but I really don't want to lose it. Yeah. Okay, just making an action step on that. Okay, so what do we need to, okay, and I guess my other question is, is this POC too far off of our narrative that we are focusing on for the raise? In other words, like Malik Dao plus augmented bonding curve is kind of the narrative we're going for, but for token engineering by token engineers created through token I, engineering. I don't think it's too far off, I just think that it's important to understand that there's a difference between the the first deliver. I mean, it goes back to our problem with the iterations, right? So this design that we've laid that that's in the cat in the conviction three, like, is, I guess, uh, this is challenging. It's a narrative problem. You might have opinions, but we got this issue where design works from sort of top to bottom, and implementation works from bottom to top. So like, although those things interplay with each other, in order to even have the design from which we decided to start with the bonding curve, we still had the design for the holistic solution. So what we wanna be able to say is like, we designed this system, here is the design implemented for you to understand the why, the whole why. That's mm -hmm. different from, like when we say that we're focusing on the bonding curve, we're actually already stepping into what? Yeah, yeah. So I true. think we just have to be careful about how we use our sort of why, what, how tools and yeah, understand yeah. that even though it might seem like backwards, this is a POC of why, not a POC of what. 
Yeah, true. And um, and I think actually this this POC would be a strong like because um, the way we're addressing this kind of roadmap of build is we're starting with you know Malik Dow plus ABC, but we're moving forward uh, to solve all the problems that these funding mechanisms are running into, like accountability with the giveth DAP, like decision making with conviction voting. So this is kind of like yeah, building our higher level. Okay, we're starting with this um, so basic you know first step, but we've got ideas from there. It's not just, it's also not just ideas. Remember, and again, I'm going to be kind of a pain about the sticklers of the tenets of complexity. Like a system is more than the sum of its parts. So if you design only from the perspective of parts, you genuinely fail. So you have to basically, even if you are trying to iterate to that, to that holistic thing, like what if we decided that our roadmap was, you know, bonding curve, conviction voting, give F that, you know, what we've mapped out. But like we were just supposing that those three things went together in the way that we thought they did. The point of the design methodology is to look at the whole problem, try to understand a holistic solution, and only then back out the path to it, as opposed to having the process just be purely part-based. And so, you know, part of the reason we have a POC of the whole is because there's no point in building the parts if they don't come together to make the intended whole. Right. Okay, so uh, let me just share my screen here. And I have the conviction uh, notebook pulled up. So I guess, I mean, we can explain part of some aspects of the system in terms of, you know, this initial distribution. Um, this is, you know, participants A through Z have, um, in, have interfaced with the token bonding curve and they have decided to purchase tokens according to this distribution. So here is all the users. That's, that's all initialization. So everything above the exactly. above the engine is the generating, say, the world is gonna start like this. There are three yeah. proposals, there are so many people, here's how much the proposals are asking for, here's how much holdings each person has, and all that data is actually in the back end of this already. It's pre-produced, and then the simulation is started, and it evolves according to a set of rules, and there's some random variables, and it just kind of adapts. And you right. see how that, think of it like, um, you ever watch like the game of life where the world just kind of bounces around? Or um, I think of it like cellular automata, right? Like wolf from yeah. the pile. You set up the rules, you set up the starting condition, and you click go, and something very organic happens. Yeah. That's what this does. And so the point is to take this and essentially say, cool, like you get to set up some of the setup, and then you hit go, and it shows you what happens. And yeah. that's the whole experience we want. So I am saying that the CAD CAD web service is enough to make it so that all you have to do is tell it some stuff, and hit go, and it will tell you what happens, and you can plot it. The question is, what do we want to say with that? It's a that's why I keep saying it's actually way more about comms and UX. It already does the thing. You tell me how the world works. I tell you what happens. We we need to know what questions we want to ask and which plots we want to show. And so right. I'm, I'm here to kind of help you guys understand what's possible, but I expect the comms team to be able to say what they think will be compelling. Right, for sure. Um, so I think I, I was just making the point that we should explain these initial assumptions as this is essentially the bonding curve. Yes, you don't get to interact with it as a user, but this, this assuming X number of users interacted with the bonding curve, this is now the distribution of tokens, and now we are within the system. Scroll down, you'll see the bonding curve invariant. Yeah, yeah, and then that's a great thing to to back that up as well and say this is the invariant of our system, and here are a bunch of spot checks of observed data, and yes, the invariant holds. So we have a you know a mathematically. Uh, the bonding curve is also responsible for that price in X die. So you see that you see that red line. Yeah, that happens because of the bonding curve. That's the same thing because in this system, the what what people are doing is. When we when I generate people's preferences and their sentiments in the back end, I'm basically determining how happy people are within the community. And if they're happy and things are going well, 
then they get more involved. If they get more involved, then they're buying tokens. If they're buying tokens, they're moving the bonding curve. If they're unhappy, like proposals are not passing and things that are affecting sentiment in the model, then they become less happy and they, they actually burn out their tokens. You can see that's not a strictly increasing function. In any particular run, people are becoming both happier and unhappier. And as a response of that, they are entering and leaving this system. So that's actually not just that, that, that red line is caused by the bonding curve in combination with the behavior of the individuals. The behavior of the individuals is determined by their sentiment and their sentiment is determined by whether or not the proposals they like are even passing. Yeah. Yeah. Full closed loop. And that's why, again, it's, it's, it's like this game of life or the cellular automata of the common stack. It just says like pick some parameters and let it run and see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So um, what should we be identifying which graphs that we, what is going on? Oh, they're playing with my mouse downstairs. <laughs> um, so first identify what story you want to tell. And then we can make graphs. I can pretty much make a graph for any story that you want. I, and I can also help Ravi learn to do that. But the trick is that the graphs are not really the thing. The story is the thing. So you want to say, what? You have, if there's actually two aspects. One is, what am I trying to show you? And what am I trying to allow you to ask? So if I want to show you like this proposal status, it just kind of shows you that the system is evolving and that you know some some projects are happening, some are succeeding, some are failing. You can plot sentiment, you can plot all sorts of stuff, but the whole dynamic state of the network is available, so you shouldn't be constrained. You can say what story you want to tell, and then someone who has the plotting experience can just make a plot. Right. You see what I mean? There's no, there's no lack of data here. Because this is emulated, the whole, the whole state data is available for you to make plots from. There's stuff that wouldn't be real in the real world, like sentiments, for example, or private signals. That information in a simulation is emulated, so we have it. So we could look at things even like how certain outcomes relate to certain um, you know, assumptions. Like, are people getting what they like? You, you wouldn't know that in the real world, but in a simulation, you can actually look at how closely the outcomes align with the preferences. Right. So we basically just need to come up with a, a single user story. So I was originally thinking that the user would come in and almost like create their own commons to suit their need, but we should give them a predefined narrative of That's what this commons is for. So someday this work will precipitate that. But so like Max Kudin and I, Kudinov and I have been talking about how to make CAD CAD uh, UIs that allow people to change the system model itself. But that's not what we're talking about here. The system model, it's given. We're going to say, given the common stack system model, and then some choices like the bonding curve invariant is still one of the things that you can change. Um, the, but also things like you know the size of the funding pool or the level, the proclivity to invest, for example. Like you can turn up or down like how how investors are like just how investing they are. If you have a much lower rate of investment, the system's going to find a different equilibrium than if it if you have a really really you know investment heavy group. You see what I mean? But the point right. is that this is a machine that answers what if questions. So we just have to set up the right what if questions. Right. Um, okay. So I guess the I mean the narrative that we are going for. Uh, as far as our present presenting the common stack at TEG and focusing mostly on iteration one. I mean, we're looking at current ecosystem funding mechanisms, but we're adding on a rigorously defined augmented bonding curve. So do we take that narrative of, you know, what are these ecosystem investment funds trying to solve right now? Like what is Moloch doing? What is Metacartel doing? What is Trojan Dow doing? And maybe is that the, the narrative tack we take on this? I wouldn't go with a comparative tack. I would actually go with a with something that's just like the system. I would prefer the sustainability tact where you actually show the the conditions under which the system self-sustains. So in a sense, we might have to say that like, okay, you know, per, you know, I want to say just sort of like 
per dollar worth of you know resources deployed we need you know so much value produced in the world i don't know like again i'm kind of brainstorming but like i'm trying to move i would say that this tool gives us the ability to look at the conditions under which the system self-sustains and that that's the thing that would stand out the most with our narrative we want to say hey look the system is you know if people are you know hello hey I made it. You made it. Yeah, hey, Max. We were just talking about the conviction CAD CAD model, and we we're talking about some web services, and actually mostly stuff that you've been telling me about, which is how do we make it so people understand the the, the question being asked and the answer. I was rambling very badly, though. <laughs> oh, I am usually talk a lot about that stuff, so if you will bring me more precise context, I can be like more comprehensible i guess yeah, for sure so the context is for this particular common stack CAD CAD model we want to understand what we want what story we want to tell so that we can pick plots you know same thing you always ask me like which plots what are we trying to tell people so i was asking these guys given that maybe the most important concept is sustainability how do we ask and answer and show that the design is sustainable uh i got it so basically most of the uh, answer uh, uh providing the end user with a uh, really powerful data vi visualized because you know not many people is comfortable to uh analyze a number numerous matrices and basically the csv files there are like very little amount of people able to do that uh, and not having a heart attack at any you know any given moment but uh for the not average but for the you know uh for anyone who has experience in analyzing stuff uh providing the easy to grasp uh understandable time charts histograms graphs etc will be really impactful from my perspective and basically will uh, drive away, will hide beneath the, you know, beneath the back end and whatever, beneath the app, uh, the complexity itself. So most of the people would be able to get the data to make a valid and rigorous decisions about their comments about their you know systems which which they are involved and which they need to prove valid i guess so the but i want to jump a bit away from that and uh what i found most exciting about the cat cat instance for the common stack is that the common stack is itself is some sort of a ha hub where which will give birth to like multiple comments which will want to use the cat cat as well and you can imagine the user flow for the maintainers or uh, how do you call the common stack folks that will provide the advisement that, that, that will provide you know guidance to the comments uh you can imagine the user flow inside of the cat cat how those people can distribute amongst the comments the newly published or uh, I don't know models, experiments. Maybe give some you know uh, tutorials or master classes to the comments. So that that interface for me is pretty unique user flow, pretty unique usage of the CatCat web app for the comment stack. Definitely. Um, so in terms of a specific um, user narrative that we can identify for this POC, um, so we need to find something that focuses on the sustainable, uh, like circular economy, efficient economy that we are trying to produce. Um, I mean, we can definitely harp on the, the commons narrative um, but it should be simple enough that it's not adding additional complexity to our explanation. 
I mean, um, we've definitely talked a lot about like, tr well, or I guess this all started from talking about cl uh, trash cleanup. Um, I know there have been a couple other um, examples that have surfaced over the course of us explaining this, but uh, I mean, any one of those could be kind of a, a good narrative story to go along with this. Would you it's agree with that? I think what we should do is even though this back end may not have any knowledge about the front end, we can essentially make a, a mock story for the for this for this you know GUI where the 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 mock right. story can be the trash cleanup, even though even if the CAD CAD model behind the scenes isn't mapping um, is not mapping all the variables to that use case, we can still get the sort of like high level variables that represent things like you know, how engaged people are with it, et cetera, to fill in the numbers and then sort of overlay the story only at the UI level. Yes, exactly. Um, so Does that what seem other... to... Yeah. So I guess we need to identify then what, um, what plots, what parameters would be, what need to be accessible, accessible by users when they're putting together this story um and how we convey those um and then overlay I think the story there are three things that we need to address one is which aspects of the initial conditions and or uh, yeah which aspects of the initial conditions are under the control of the user so that's like how many people how many proposals stuff like that we don't want to have everything but we want to pick a couple parameters then um the next is, um, sorry, the next is which aspects of the system are available for them to set, which means um, like the, the sentiment sensitivity or the, or excuse me, that's the last one. Second thing is the system parameters like kappa or like the conviction rate theta, uh, alpha. So again, we don't want everything, but there's initial conditions, there's system parameters, and then there's environmental conditions. And environmental conditions are gonna be things like people's propensity to donate, how sensitive they are to success and failure, or like, you know, generally like sort of unknowns that we have to make up. So it's initial conditions, system parameters, and sort of environmental stuff. And we probably don't want more than one or two of each of those so that people aren't overwhelmed, or maybe we find a way to make them like, sort of segment away selecting those things so that it's not too hard for them to understand. But once they select those three groups of things, all they're doing is hit go, and then this thing generates a bunch of data, and the last choice is like, what plots do they wanna see? And so th that's what you were asking. So I know that's a several things to select, but we're, we can all the way break it down to initial conditions, system parameters, environmental conditions, which plots or KPIs do we care about, and then basically how do we organize that into a user flow that is tolerable for someone who's never seen these systems before? Yes. Awesome, great to hear I you have, break I it have a comment to make uh, about what Mike just said. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, uh, from a user experience, user experience side, uh, so the models, the systems, for which they are made, the types of the experiments, it's it's probably feasible and to do that in a simple, easy to use UI. Uh, but I doubt that you know you can basically decrease the amount of you know steps to uh, just a couple of things. What I'm basically trying to say right now. That those people are not necessarily. Uh, I'm just afraid that uh, Mike will suffer to a Dunning Kruger effect again, and most of the people who will be dealing with this, if we if we are talking about the comments and their you know leaders of those comments, they probably are not that deep in in inside into complexity. And you still need to do a step-by-step -step tutorial, and they still probably won't know which you know input they need or want to make to 
achieve the plot that they are aiming to. So probably the solution would be some sort of a, a UI that will allow to send a request to a common stack uh, advisors or to a block science or to whoever is capable of coming up with a set of variables set of you know to fulfill the plot they, they need. I really doubt that that can be presetted in the UI from the beginning unless you uh, have someone who is capable to not just only come up with a plot but able to uh, yeah. basically come up with so let's what is needed to separate it max between two things then let's make one that's super scripted and, and easy that's like dumb as possible for this poc but with the understanding that like eventually exactly what you're describing is like what we are calling modules and to like we're gonna have to be able to support people with the things that you're describing eventually but it's not really in scope for right this second. So the question is like, what's the minimum viable web service that will help people have a visceral or very human response? And I guess you're saying that like, I'm asking for too much, that we would want something that's just even dumber. No, basically uh, what I'm really trying to say is that you will still have most of the work done by yourself. And yeah, this is it. It's not like it's dumb or it's hard to do. It's just, you know, the burden of designing stuff will be on the block science shoulders again. And that kind of approach is not really scalable. And if, we, if we're talking about, you know, scaling, scaling uh, the commons and creating more and more and more, that will face a real, a real problem of you will be just overwhelmed with a request or work or you should. I, I understand. But I mean, I think yeah, we just have it. to tell the difference between right this moment where we're trying to tell a story. I'm not suggesting that, that we're going to do all that work that you described for all of these people. I just want to get something that takes what we already have and lets them play like, like, and like learn by playing. Yeah, just to add to that, if I if I hear all the all the arguments, is that I think there are two things we want to convey to people. So first of all, is, is like use the graphs and like a, a, a certain presets that tells one story that explains people in a simple way without knowing all the details of the system. Like, okay, it's capable of doing this, and given sensible inputs it will result into a sensible output and then like uh, results that you can understand you can see okay this makes sense and the second thing uh, i think we want to convey to people with that poc is that it's actually something live it's it's more than just a story and some static graphs that, that we created but it's really a working system and by having them just manipulate one or two parameters and let it really run we we show them that it's actually working thing it's not like vaporware or it's something they can actually touch and feel um and play around with um are those the two things that we want to have in that in that narrative jeff um yeah i, I definitely agree that we should keep it as as simple as possible and I mean, perhaps those those things that are outside the scope of like variable parameters, like I don't know how deep we want to go into, you know, initial conditions. Obviously, everyone knows there has to be initial conditions. Some of these system parameters perhaps can wait. Um, you know, I don't really look forward to diving into like, um, you know, explaining alpha or, or theta or I mean, we, I think we should identify a few system parameters that will allow people to gain an understanding of the power of this system and also maybe explain narratively the other assumptions we that we're into this. Ignore initial conditions and system parameters and only let people play with the environmental conditions. And so the environmental conditions are things like sensitivity and um, what were the other you mentioned, like propensity to donate? Yeah, so 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 the the sentiment decay is how basically how quickly people get bored or lose interest. So if nothing's happening, the sentiment decays. 
if uh, sensitivity basically means that if stuff you like is passing, then you get happy more. And if stuff you don't like is happening, then you get unhappy faster. So like sensitivity is kind of bi-directional in the sense that yeah. good things are more good and bad things are more bad. And then sentiment decay is sort of a, a passive loss of interest, but things like that. And there's some other stochastic processes that are, um, you know, embedded in this that determine like the sort of base donation rates, stuff like that. There's some room for you to play with things that we know we don't know, but I like using those as the things that you can change because we're just saying, look, like we can make some reasonable assumptions, but like, hey, if you think that people are never, are gonna be more sensitive or gonna lose interest faster or not donate as much, just like change the numbers and see what happens. So, I mean, as far as like user intuitive parameters, those don't strike me as the first ones that would, I mean, of course they're important to this model, but I feel like that would only be more sophisticated users might question those parameters. Maybe it would be easier to start with simpler parameters, even if they don't, um, you know, they're, they're probably less interesting on system impact, but yeah. I feel like people would be more. It's a narrative question because at this yeah. point, like, if you can describe the stories that you want to tell, I can pretty much tell you which variables to mess with. But I can't, I don't really, for me, the things that are interesting are the scientific ones, which are the stuff that I just explained. But if those aren't going to have the necessary effect for a person who's playing, then let's give them the things that they want to play with, not the things that I would use for a scientific design. Right, right. Um, I would like to say a few things. Um, so I really like, uh, I, I do think something like this is needed, uh, like something to, for people to play around with values. I just feel that it's not easy to find a target audience for that because there is one part of the audience who is so smart that they are already part of the CatCat program. They are part of the white list. They're already auto interested. And there is another huge part of people that will never get it. And our real problem is people don't admit that they don't get things. So they will just say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they go, they will just forget about it. And that's why I really like this suggestion. If we come down to the actual thing where we where people want to deploy a comments that we offer or we establish this kind of advisor service that would design your comments for you, because this is how this uh, type of complexity is abstracted in the common economic world is you get a professional to do it for you and that makes you feel less dumb because you uh, you just contracted with a cool guy so it you feel smart again and uh, so I li really like this approach and also I wanted to say keep in mind that there is like an intermediary version um, I looked around the internet and it seems like you can have UIs within notebooks. So um, I don't know if you ever played with those C, but uh, actually any value you have uh, in your notebooks, you can expose as a slider or something. Yeah. So about, I have a comment on that as well. Uh, Recently, I was working with a, a person uh, who is trying to complete his PhD work in a cognitive science, and he is trying to apply these principles to uh, designing the uh, user experience. So uh, a couple of days ago, we had a discussion about how to uh, explain the complexity of something of... Uh, and why people are bothered, frustrated, or in the end, not enough motivated to like do some effort in understanding that. Because it seems like there is only like couple of options when people, why people don't get the complexity. First, they are just dumb. Uh, but, the sec but the second, which is more spread, is people feel frustrated, they don't have time for that, they basically lack the motivation and the trick of the ux in here would be to uh not to explain the complexity from the beginning look how complex this thing is and you will be awesome if you will play with it and blah 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 but instead it will go otherwise so you will let 
person to receive something that will get him excited or in, at least interested so they will get the required motivation to like, ah, oh, probably, wait a second, can I do that thing? Wait a second, maybe, maybe I can yeah, 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 yeah. Add that curiosity, that interest in, will guide them to, to uh, at least a description of the model, at least uh, trying to understand and get educated. Maybe they will go and read all the narratives, all the documents that the common stack provides. Maybe they will reach out to the block science for get some consulting or something like that. But this is the main trick that we are will be aiming to achieve in terms of not just enforce people to understand com complexity, but to motivate them enough to awoke curiosity and interest to get it. Hey. Sorry, guys, I guess it's four o'clock. I didn't, uh, I kind of lost track of time there. I have a hard stop because I've got to jump into another uh, call here. Um, but I think that was good. And I think we do need another conversation to flip this out a bit more. But are there any last minute questions or action steps? Or does everyone have a pretty good understanding and we will uh, uh, circle yeah. back? So my, my last minute statement is just that I think we just really, a different deliverable and that we save that scope but we define this in terms of something very play oriented and if we can get that that i think the distance between the code we have and a playful thing is actually quite small the challenge is deciding what that playful thing is yeah and that's a user flow discussion more than anything else cool Okay, that sounds good. Well, uh, I have some notes on this. I'll type them up and uh, share them probably in the agenda doc, um, and we will touch base on this again soon. Thanks, everybody. Great, thanks. Bye-bye. See ya. Thanks. See ya. Thanks.